Whoops, what's going on here? One second. So how to prepare. So before any interview, it's always important to do your research on the company. So read the mission statement. Know what they value at their company and in their employees. It's important to be able to articulate how your values align with theirs. Review and analyze the job description. Know the skills and core competencies they are looking for. Also, a rule of thumb is to always save the job description because many companies will end up taking it down once they have picked the candidates they want to interview. And you want to make sure you can refer back to the job description and actually remember what position you're interviewing for. Put yourself in the shoes of the interviewer. Take a step back and really put yourself in the hiring manager's shoes and ask yourself, how can I be the best possible candidate? Or what exactly are they looking for? Self-evaluate yourself. So ask yourself some of these questions before the interview. Do I know my strengths and weaknesses? Do I know why I'm passionate and interested in this specific position? What past experiences can I discuss during the interview? What are my future goals and what, not, what am I essentially passionate about? Again, putting yourself in the hiring manager's shoes, what are the specific skills needed for this position? What stories and past experiences showcase who I am and really highlight my work performance? Taking the time to prepare and ask yourself these questions will help you organize how you want to present yourself to the employer. Making a good first impression. So first impressions are extremely important for the interview. While these may seem pretty simple, um, they're the most common mistakes people make. So handshake skills. Having a strong handshake is extremely important. It sets the tone for the entire interview. Make sure the handshake is firm but not painful. The web of your hand between the thumb and pointer should meet the web of their hand. Make sure you have direct eye contact, smile, and introduce yourself confidently. We have examples on the sides of different handshakes they do, but the lobster claw one, I would say, is the one I see the most. Also, have, have positive energy. As simple as it sounds, you want the employer to like you. And finally, appearance is important. Always aim for business professional, not business casual. Make sure you shower, iron your clothes ahead of time. If you have long hair, make sure it's pulled back away from your face so you're not tempted to mess with it during the interview because that can be very distracting. And following all these steps will help you start the interview off on the right foot. So the questions. So how do you make yourself stand out during this interview? The key is to always provide examples. You can list skills and say, oh, I'm a hard worker, or oh, I have strong leadership skills, and that's great, but an employer wants to know how you have these skills. And having concrete stories, examples, and experiences to, sh to share will help prove that you do. Do some story making and really brainstorm important experiences you've had that highlight your leadership skills, your conflict resolution skills, or any other skills that show you are a well-rounded candidate. The steps we discussed during the how to prepare slide will really help guide you. The first question employers always ask is tell me a little bit about yourself. This can usually really throw off a candidate because they end up going on a tangent and aren't very organized. With this question, it's very, very important to be organized. You can go about it in two ways. You can um, do a start out with a snapshot of yourself and your passions. Then you can go right into what you're studying, maybe, and ex an experience that led you to this point. And then finally, why you're so excited for this position um, and feel you would be a good fit. Another way you can do, answer this question is do a past, present, future format. So what that means is you start with the present, where you're currently working or what you're doing now. This format's better if you've had a lot of work experience. Then go a little bit into the past and highlight some skills and knowledge you've gained during your previous positions that match what they are looking for. Then finally, the future. Express why you're excited for this, for this position again and to work for their company. Strengths and weaknesses. So this is a question that almost always gets asked during an interview. Make sure you always know at least two strengths and one weakness that you have. Is why brainstorming is extremely important. 
With strengths, being able to articulate strengths that highlight how you can be a valuable asset to their company. But again, always being able to support a strength with an example or an experience. For weaknesses, this can be a little bit more difficult. Make sure you're honest, but also don't give a weakness that will hinder you from the job. For example, if you're interviewing for a customer service position, it probably wouldn't be the best idea to say, I don't really like working with people individually. For weaknesses, do avoid saying the cliche answer of, I'm a perfectionist, because that doesn't really answer the question. The purpose of the weakness question is for employers to know that you can self-evaluate yourself and be able to work through these issues. For example, I found that one weakness of mine is I tend to take on a lot at once and overwhelm myself. To work on this weakness, I've learned to make concrete lists and prioritize what tasks need to be completed at a certain time. This weakness has helped me become more organized and self-evaluate myself better. Next question, which you will definitely be asked, why are you interested in this position? This goes back to the beginning where it's important to know the job description and save it so you can always refer back to it. Make sure with this question you show your excitement, passion, and how you would be a good fit. What separates you from others? This is where you sell yourself. Share an experience, give examples that really highlight who you are and what makes you different in a positive way. They might even ask you, why should we choose you over other candidates? Again, sharing that passion, that hard work, and really, really thinking about an experience that makes you stand out. What are your future goals? It's important to be able to express your future goals and how this position will help you grow as a person and reach that goal. Now we're gonna move into the conflict questions. Having strong conflict resolution skills are extremely important in the workplace. Um, so describe a time you had to resolve an issue with an employer. Make sure you never talk badly about a past employer or company because that doesn't make you a likable person to an employer. And, will, and they will also wonder if you will do the same after you leave their company. In this question, make sure you give an example of how you positively handled the situation and were able to move on and remain professional for the overall good of the order. Using STAR format helps, S-T-A-R, which I will explain in just a bit. How do you deal with stress? This goes back to being able to self-evaluate yourself. Employers want to know that you are a hard worker, but they also want to know that you won't burn out easily and value self-care. This is important in order to recharge and keep going. This type of question will usually get asked when going into healthcare, if you're applying to med school, for example. And the wrong way to answer it is to say you overwork yourself and don't take time to relax because self-care is extremely important. What are your hobbies and interests? This is just a get to know you and your personality. An employer wants to know that you are well-rounded and they really just wanna know if, who you are and if you're a good fit. Tell me about a time you took initiative. So this question is why story banking and preparing for the interview is extremely important. You need to be able to draw from a past experience, essentially tell a short story. This is again where sometimes people tend to go off in a tangent. When sharing stories and past experiences, it's important to use a STAR format, like I said earlier, the S-T-A-R, which stands for S is situation, T is task, A is action, and R is result. So when you're telling the story, you start out with a situation. You describe the context which you performed the job or faced a challenge at work. For example, um, if you're working on a group project or you had a conflict with a coworker. The second is a task. So next, describe your responsibility in that situation. Perhaps you had to help with a group project under a tight deadline. Action. You then describe how you completed the task or met the challenge and focus on what you did rather than what your team, your boss, or your coworker did. And then finally, result. So finally, emphasize the outcomes or results generated by the action taken. You might emphasize what you accomplished or even more importantly, what you learned. All right, and then next one, asking questions and thank you letters. So asking questions um, is extremely important. After an interview is done, the employer almost always asks you if you have any questions for them. So some possible questions you need to ask are, what are qualities you're looking for? What goals have you set for this position? How would you describe the culture in this organization? Or what have other individuals gone on to do after this experience? 
these questions are just are more for you and to also show that you are excited and wondering what it's going to be like working here. Um, a lot of these questions are ones you can use, but you can do your own. And a lot of the questions that you can do on your own, you can find from the company website or things that you've learned by doing some research and ask. Also, after you've left the interview, it's important to reflect and send a thank you letter. It always gets asked if a thank you letter is required. It's not, but it gives you a huge a huge advantage. For example, if the hiring manager is stuck between two candidates or really great candidates and one sends a thoughtful thank you letter that kind of reflects a little bit on the interview and shows how excited and passionate they are for that position, who do you think they will pick? Um, definitely the one that put in the extra effort. So make sure you touch on a few of these things um, and it can either be handwritten or through email. And this is just a kind of an example, I'm not gonna read it, but of a thank you letter. Um, it's kind of organized like a cover letter where you got the date and then who the hiring manager was. And just says a thank you for the interview, a little bit about maybe some things that went on in the interview, something that you liked about the interview or something that you liked that you talked about. And then at the end, thanking them, thanking them for considering you for this position and that you'll, um, you'll look forward to hearing from them. So interview do's and don'ts. So this is just kind of a simple list of what you should and should not do during the interview. So a lot of these we touched on, but you know, providing examples, researching, um, positive body language, reflecting on the interview afterwards, and don't, so don't discuss salary, have generic answers, don't focus on negative experiences, like we said, that could hinder you from the job, um, and make sure you show enthusiasm and have depth to all your answers. So evaluating the interview for professional development. So whether the interview went extremely well or didn't go so well, you should always evaluate yourself after the interview because you can always, always improve. So first thing you can do is write down things that went well and what you struggled with. Um, it's good to refer back to different experiences. Do mock interviews. So our office facilitate the, facilitates those. You could do them over Skype or you could come into the office and we would be asking you questions that any employer would ask you and then give you feedback. Story banking, like we said before, knowing what experiences to use. Working on public speaking. So doing a webinar like this or presenting um, to different employers or friends or family, just working on those public speaking skills. Informational interviews. So that's more networking, reaching out to different employers, maybe sending them an email and saying, hey, I'd love to pick your brain for a little bit, kind of know how you got to where you are today. Um, and it's really getting yourself out there and gaining more knowledge about how they got to the career field that you eventually want. And then after, this is really great because then say when they are hiring, they will remember you and remember how passionate you were about learning more about their company and themselves. Also, and that goes back into having more professional conversations. So that really helps doing that through those informational interviews. Perfect. So that's all. Um, this is my email. So if you have any other questions, feel free to send them in. And then this is our career development office number. So thank you for listening.